Hello everyone. Today's lesson will be on parametric equation A level mathematics year 2. And as you can see on the screen, I have a graph with a curve that is defined by two equations. One equation in the, of x and another equation of y. And here we have a third parameter, t. So it's possible to have a third parameter and then sketch a curve with parametric equations. And let's go to exercise and examples. So for parametric equations, we can also find the Cartesian equation by, by making the t the subject and then substitution, we can convert the equation into a Cartesian equation. Then domain of the function in Cartesian form is exactly the range of the function x the x equation and the range of the Cartesian form of the function is the range of the y equation of the parametric equation. A curve has parametric equations x equals 2t and the second equation is y equals t squared and the value of the t takes between is minus 3 and 3. So we have a third parameter that it takes values between negative 3 and 3, and we want to find the Cartesian form. To find the Cartesian form, we take one of the equations and make t the subject. And as you can see on the screen, I take the x equals 2t. I make t the subject. t is equal to x over 2. And by substitution, I went to the second equation. And then the sec I eliminate the t parameter in y equals t squared and then I have the Cartesian form of the function. So the function f is x squared over 4. State the domain and the range of the f. The domain of the function f is exactly the x equation of the parametric. And if you see the x equation is equal to 2t, and since the t takes values between negative 3 and 3, the minimum value is minus 6, and the upper bound, the higher value, is 6. So the domain is negative 6, 6. It takes values within this range. To find, to sketch, to find the range, we use the y equation. And the y equation is a quadratic, it's a parabola, and from the graph, you can also find the range because if the t takes values between 3 and negative 3, the higher limit is 9. 3 squared is 9. And you see here that the, the range is between 0 and 9. And you can also see this from the graph of a parabola. In case you don't want to use the equations, you can also use the graph of the parabola. And this is, as you already know, the x squared graph is a u-shaped graph in this way. So we see that it goes up to my up to nine on the vertical axis. Okay, so you go and sketch the graph. So here is the nine and the here on the x is the three and here is negative three. This is one possible question on parametrics and you here you can see the graph of the parabola. You see the function is x squared over four and then it's a parabola. So the x equals 6, the function f gives you a 9. See, the domain is 2 times 3, so it's 6, the domain, and then the function will be 9. Okay. The second example I have here is two equations defined as x equals ln t plus 3, and the second is y equals 1 over t plus 5. Find the Cartesian form. I need to use one of the equations and make t the subject. I take the ln of t plus 3 equals x. Then using the properties, I make, I eliminate the ln. e to the power of x equals t plus 3. So t is equal to e to the power of x minus 3. And by substitution, I went to the second equation and I found the Cartesian form. So it is 1 over e to the power of x plus 2. The range of the function, as you can see, I need to see on the second equation of the y, y equals 1 over t plus 5, 
and you can find the range by using the least possible value of the t, the lower bound. The lower bound of t is negative 2. And if you can see here, the negative 2 plus 5 is a plus 3. That is why I have the upper bound of the function, because this is the reciprocal graph, and the lowest possible value for the domain, for the t, give you the upper bound of the function is 1 over x. So the range of the function, since it doesn't get negative values, it doesn't go into negative values, you have 0 and 1 third. This is the range of the function. Here we have a exercise on parametrics, a curve, we have these two equations, x equals square root of t, y equals t times 9 minus t, and the t takes values between 0 and 5. We want to find the Cartesian equation. To find the Cartesian equation, we need to make t the subject by using the x equals square root of t equation. We square both sides, and therefore the t is equal to x squared. Using this value of the t, I use substitution. I go to the y equation, and I found the Cartesian form as y equals 9x squared minus x to the power of 4. To find the domain, we can find the domain using the x equation. The x equals square root of t, and since the t takes values between 0 and 5, the domain will be between 0 and square root of 5. To find the range, we take the y equation, and since the t takes values between 0 and 5, the values of the range it will be 0 and 20 because 9 minus, minus 5 is 4, 4 times 5 is 20. So we found the range and the domain using the equations. To sketch this, you can factorize the Cartesian equation, okay, and you can find the x-intercepts. And this is, uh, it has about 3 x-intercepts, but here we have a restriction on the domain. That's why we stop up to this point here, you see on the graph below, because we have restrictions on the value of the t. We don't go and complete the full graph because the t has some restrictions. The t takes values between 0 and 5. So, to find the value of the end point here, of the x, you see that t takes higher value is the 5. So, for the x coordinate, x, it will be square root of 5, x coordinate. And to find the 20 here is the range we found before is 20. So it's square root of 520. And then you can see the origin is a repeated solution because it's x squared. This has a minimum value at the origin because we have x squared times 3 minus x times 3 plus x. Since we have the x squared here, I have a minimum value, and that's why I have this, uh, like a parabola here, on the x. But since the minimum value is 0, we start from 0 and going up, having a maximum point, and then go up to the end point, root 5, comma 20. The other equation I have, the other exercise I have, I have these two curves the C1 and the C2 that are defined by parametric equations. The, these two curves are defined by parametric equations, and here we need to show that both of the curves are exactly the segments of the same straight line. To show this, we need to find the Cartesian form of the curve 1 and the Cartesian form of the curve 2 and show that they have exactly the same straight line. This is how you show that both curves are segments of the same straight line. So we get the two equations from the curve 1. We make substitution to find the Cartesian form. We make t the subject. t is x minus 1 over 2. And by substitution, I go to the second equation. And I found the Cartesian form as y equals 3x over 2 plus a half. The curve 2, I do exactly the same thing. I try to make t the subject using the x equation. And t is equal to a fraction, 1 plus 3x over 2x. Then I use substitution and some calculations 
algebraic equation of fractions simplifying the fractions and I found exactly the same equation you have to do all these calculations and I found 3 over 2x plus a half and as you can see here I have exactly the same straight line 3 over 2x plus a half 3 over 2x plus a half for the second curve and to answer the other part find the length of each line segment to find the length we, need, we can use the distance formula of two points. There is a formula that we use to find the distance between two points. And if I found two points on this line, then I can also find the length. I can find the endpoints. Okay, the distance formula is this, the formula you see on the screen. Distance squared is equal to a, di, the change of x squared plus the change of y squared. And then you take the square root. And I found two points on the curve 1. To find the two points, you use the domain of t. Domain of t takes 2 and 5. So when the x is 5, the x is 11. And when the x is, sorry, when the x is 5, for t, the x is 11. And for the y, I, go, I use the y equation, and I found the 17 for y equals 8 so this is so this is 3 times 5 7 yes 15 so it's 17 I found the two points 5 comma 8 5 comma 8 and it give you 11 comma 17 and then I use the formula and I found the distance of the line segment. The same I did for this for the second curve. I use the domain two and three for when the t is two the x is one and when the two is two the y is two. So this gives me point one comma two. And when the t is three is the upper bound, the x is one third and the y is one. So the point is one third one. Then I used the distance formula and I found the distance as squared of 13 over 3. So this is the number 6 from the book. This is parametric equations. They give you two equations in a different graphs, different styles. So it's x equals 3 over t plus 2. And the other equation is 2t minus 3 minus t squared. We have to find the range of the x and the y in the given domain of t. So to find exactly the range of x, if you check the graph of the x, is, a, is the reciprocal graph plus 2, which means it's a vertical translation of the reciprocal graph. And you may get this, you see that the range, the domain is, is the r, because x can take any value since the t here has no restrictions if you see here the t belongs in r the r is all the real numbers so it can take any number negative positive decimals any number so if the t has no restriction then this has no restriction on the function x and since it is a reciprocal graph then the x is the domain of the x is r as well and to find the domain of t yes and the range of y, if because this is a parabola, then graph of 2t minus 3 minus t squared is a parabola. We can find the maximum point of the parabola by completing the square. And this is what I did here on the screen. And I found the maximum point is 1 comma minus 2. This is the maximum point. I have the graph here. This is the graph that shows the maximum point. And since it doesn't go higher than negative 2, the range of the function of the y need to be f, the y less than or equal to negative 2. To show, to find the Cartesian form, we we'll do exactly the same thing by substitution of t into the y. So we try to make t the subject using the x equation, and I found the t is equal to a fraction 3 over x minus 2 and by substitution into the second equation I found the y by using all these algebraic fraction calculations algebraic fractions combining the two fractions the three fractions 
and factorize z, I found the last fraction, which is the Cartesian form. Minus 3 bracket x squared minus 6x plus 11 over x minus 2 bracket squared. Another exercise here on parametric equations is x equals 3 square root of t and the y equals t to the power of 3 minus 2t when the t takes values between 0 and 2. You have the graph on the right hand side. So we need to find the Cartesian form. To find the Cartesian form we make t the subject by squaring both sides of the equation of the x and the t is equal to x squared over 9 I use substitution into the y, and then I have the equation of the function x to the power of 6 over 729 minus 2 over 9 times x squared. And then the, to find the domain, we do exactly the same thing, okay? And to find, to answer the part b, <coughs> to answer the part b, I need to show that the derivative dy over dt is equal to 0 when the t is the square root of 2 over 3. Here I need to find the dy over dt by differentiation, then I have 3t squared minus 2, I make this equal to 0, and I found the t is a plus square root of 2 over 3. To find the range of the function, you see here I have a minimum point, so this minimum point gives you the lowest possible value of the function, so you can find the minimum point by taking the t value here because this is a stationary value. If I make the derivative equal to zero, then it gives me the minimum or maximum value of the function. So this is when the t is square root of two over three. So to find the y value, I use the y equation and I found the, low, the lower bound. So it's minus four root six over nine. And this is the lower value, so you can go higher than this one, the range. So if you like the lesson and you want to subscribe and like the video so you can see more lessons like this, and then you, I, can, I post videos on different levels and different topics in math, GCSEs, A-level, and you can uh, give any comment and an to answer your questions. Thank you. Bye.